Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at another mini PC. This one is called the Leva Z Plus. It's from a company called the ECS Group. I think we've looked at a couple of PCs from them in the past. They always make these really interesting designs that are a little different than many of the other mini PCs we have looked at. And what's unique about this one is that it has a, a full-powered i5 processor on board, at least for a notebook. It's got an i5-7300U processor. Uh, so that is a new KB Lake chip, uh, but it's in something as small as we've seen typically on some of those lower powered devices. So with this chip, uh, you can do much better video playback, especially some of the HEVC formats and uh, Netflix at 4K if you've got the right set of conditions installed on here to make it work. So there are some intriguing options on this one for uh, people looking for a mini PC with a little more horsepower perhaps. And before we get into the review, I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure, this is on loan from the ECS group. When we're done with this, we'll be sending it back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. All right, so let's step through the hardware now. I should note that a couple of things that they had listed on their Amazon listing are not correct. Uh, primarily that this is a fanless computer. It is not a fanless computer. There's a little fan that runs. Uh, very quiet though, which was good, but there is a fan on here nonetheless. So if you see it being listed as fanless, uh, it is not, but I don't think it could be given uh, what you need for thermals on here. I'll talk more about its temperature uh, under load in a little bit. Four gigabytes of RAM on this one. Uh, they listed it as DDR3 in dual channel configuration. The one I got is DDR4 in single channel configuration, but you can do some upgrades to it. It also has 128 gigabytes of solid state storage installed. Now what I did do is take, took off the uh, bottom casing here so you can see what's inside. So you can uh, upgrade the storage and the RAM. So what I did is I put in two sticks of a DDR4 RAM here to get it up to dual channel. It immediately recognized that second module and went into dual channel mode. So that was a good thing. We get a bit of a performance boost out of this, which I'll show you in a few minutes. So right now I'm running this one with, I believe, eight gigabytes of RAM versus the four that it came with. It also has a M2 SATA slot here, but not the full size one. So it looks like it ends right where uh, that uh, little screw goes there. So you have to get some of the smaller units there. It may not be as fast as some of the larger ones, but I think for what you'll be doing with this, thing it seems to be adequate to me. On the front here you've got a bunch of ports. You've got three USB 3.0 ports as well as a USB Type-C. This is not Thunderbolt though so you cannot hook up any Thunderbolt devices but USB-C devices will work provided they're just data devices. I did not get video or any power going in through that port so just data on there. All of these run at the 3.1 Gen 1 speed of 5 gigabits per second. Uh, everything's been working fine with some of the external solid states I've been installing on it. You have a headphone jack here. I don't believe this is a microphone input. It just has the headphone uh, icon on there. So I don't know if there's an audio input without uh, plugging in some USB. Now in the back, interestingly enough, there are two gigabit ethernet jacks on here. So I guess you can make this into some kind of crazy router or something with a lot of horsepower behind it. Maybe if you want to do a firewall or something, you could configure this to do that. Your power goes in here and you have HDMI output here along with a display port output and I think it can drive uh, two different displays at the same time. Uh, what I did notice it was uh, going only to 30 frames per second at 4K so I think 30p is the max and it has Intel graphics built in no discrete GPU. All right, so let's take a look now and see how it performs. I've got Windows running on it right now. I do not believe this comes with a Windows license though for its $489 price tag. So you may have to factor in the cost of a Windows license in all of this as well. It would be very nice if they just offered a bare bones unit with no RAM or storage so you can pick out uh, your best configuration and uh, budget accordingly. But right now it looks like you'll need to find your own Windows license to get all of this working. It does support wireless AC. We're going to be looking at it with gigabit ethernet connected to it right now. It also has Bluetooth on board if you have Bluetooth devices. What we're gonna be looking at right here is my YouTube channel first. This is a 1080p 60 frames per second video. We'll pull up the stats for nerds and uh, we are not dropping any frames. Everything is keeping up as I would expect it to. So that is a good thing there. So it seems like we're getting uh, that full KB Lake performance out of this thing. Uh, we'll load up the nasa.gov homepage and you can see everything is loading up very quickly on here due in part to our network connection but also because this is a very fast little computer that is keeping up quite nicely with all of this so that seems to be working quite well. I've been running the speedometer test which is a uh, web benchmarking tool that I run in Google Chrome. It's what the uh, the Google people recommend now as a benchmark for measuring browser performance and we got a score on there of 133.1 when we had the RAM in single channel configuration and that lines up 
uh, fairly close to where I expected it to be. If you compare it to the Yoga 720 from Lenovo, it's a 13-inch laptop with a similar i5 processor from this generation. That one came in at 127.9. So I think insofar as its web performance is concerned, it's going to do just fine. And it also does well with Microsoft Word and Office and other productivity applications. We've got our newsletter template here. As you can see, it's rendering everything very, very quickly, uh, due in part to that KB Lake processor on here. So uh, graphic design and all the other stuff you might do for productivity is going to be just fine on here too. All right, so now with all the boring stuff out of the way, let's get to some gaming. I've got Rocket League running right now on this thing. We're running at 1080p with all of the settings turned down. Uh, and that's going to give us the best possible frame rate. I was trying to see if we can get 60 frames per second out of this thing at 1080p, and we can. It doesn't look so great because everything is uh, on its lowest setting, but it is very playable, and uh, we're running right now at about 65 frames per second, and I'm seeing it go as high as 75 or so. Uh, typically, I'm staying above 60 as I'm going here, so that's really good stuff. It's always easier to uh, shoot the ball on your own goal in this game, apparently, but uh, nevertheless, it is a really nice performance uh, boost here that we've seen with these KB Lake processes especially for graphics and gaming and it's not going to be as good as having a computer with its own GPU uh, but this is a real big step in the right direction I do suggest though that you make sure you configure this thing with that dual channel memory as you saw at the outset here because uh, it won't perform as well uh, with only one stick of RAM we've seen this over and over again on uh, this current generation of Intel chips here so I would definitely make sure you've got that second module installed to uh, be able to get to this level of graphical performance and on the 3D Mark CloudGate test, we got a score of 6,877 with two RAM sticks installed versus 5,895 with a single stick. And you can see the biggest difference there on that first graphics test, 42 frames per second versus 31. So you really get a pretty big boost in performance when you slide that other RAM stick in. Uh, this computer, though, is pretty powerful, especially for some advanced emulations. We're running uh, the Dolphin emulator here. I'm getting uh, full speed, basically, running at its 30 frames per second native uh, speed here. And I think uh, you could probably push it a little further, too, if you adjust some of the settings here. So really uh, working quite well. And I think it's actually a nice little casual gaming device that, as long as you understand some of the limitations of the Intel graphics, you'll have a pretty good experience with this thing. So let's take a look now at its home theater performance. We're going to start with serving media, and I've got this thing running as a Plex server right now, and I usually recommend an i5 processor being uh, something you should look for in a Plex server. And I'm going to be playing back some media here, both to my phone and to my iPad. So my uh, phone right now is running a recording that I had it make from its new DVR feature. This is an MPEG-2 file getting transcoded uh, down to a phone. And then I've got my iPad running here with a uh, Blu-ray MKV file. So both of these things are being transcoded right now. And you can see uh, the load we're putting on the, on the device here. But uh, it's looking like everything is playing back smoothly. I'm not seeing any drop frames. Uh, really good performance. So I would say probably two transcoding clients might be the max on this particular device, although I'm seeing that Plex is uh, making as much use of the CPU as possible and then allowing other things to happen when you do that. So for example, if we go back to NASA's website, uh, it won't impact the playback performance on our devices here. It might just do a little less transcoding in uh, the background as other things are happening. But uh, so far, it looks like I would say two safely seem to work just fine and uh, you can experiment more and see where you go from there. And I was also able to run Cody successfully on here. We'll start really quick with our jellyfish demo here. This is a 140 megabits per second HEVC 10-bit 4K file. Uh, throwing the book at it here and everything uh, runs just fine. One of the things that this new generation of processors brings is enhanced H.265 support, uh, namely HEVC files like this one and everything seems to be uh, running very, very nicely on here as I would expect it would. And the good news is that it also supports the lossless audio formats, DTS HD and Dolby True HD. It also works at 24p. I tested all of that earlier with a Blu-ray MKV and uh, all was good. So that's a, a nice step in the right direction on the home theater front. And the last question you probably have is thermals. How well does it do playing back these movies over a length of time? Well, as I mentioned, uh, this is not fanless, so there is a little fan running to blow the hot air out of it so it doesn't uh, slow down over time. So I let this jellyfish demo here, which is that 
140 megabits per second file uh, run over and over again and I let it run for about two hours and we didn't have a drop frame at all when I came back to look at it again so it looks like it is actually uh, able to get rid of all the heat that it's generating doing the video playback even with something as high end as this so I think if you are doing a movie marathon here you shouldn't have any issues uh, playing back movies that you want to take a look at. I did run the 3D Mark stress test on it to see if there was any thermal slowdown under load, especially when running graphical stuff like games, and it scored a 97.7%, which is just barely passing on that test, but I think for the most part, if you're uh, doing a lot of movie playback on here, it's going to be able to keep up just fine there. And that little jump you saw was the movie file just going looping back to the beginning again. So uh, no drop frames here. It seems to be uh, working very, very well as a media player. And I don't think heat will be a problem. And the fan really is not loud on here at all. I was really surprised by that. Even under uh, extreme load, like with the games and the benchmarks that I was running, uh, the fan really does not make much noise. And if you are sitting across a room from it, I don't think you'll hear it at all. And one last thing to check out, and that is how well it handles alternative operating systems. So I've got Ubuntu loaded up right here, and actually everything is working very nicely. It's very quick and responsive. It feels just as nice as Windows does on it. Uh, the Wi-Fi works, the Ethernet works, the Bluetooth works, the sound works. So all the stuff that usually gives me trouble on Linux is not uh, doing that to me right now here. So I think from an Ubuntu standpoint, we're looking at some pretty decent compatibility, and I would imagine other uh, open source operating systems, especially the ones based on Ubuntu, who are also going to work well uh, too. So really good stuff there. So that's going to do it for the Leva Z Plus. And I think all in, this is a really nice little computer that uh, does a lot of different things that a lot of different users might be looking for. It does very well as a home theater device. Uh, the only gotcha being that it doesn't do more than 30 frames per second at 4K. So if you are looking for a 60 frames per second device, you're probably still best going with an NVIDIA Shield or something like that. But uh, if you're looking for a general computing device that also outputs 4K, uh, this will do the trick. And certainly a lot of movies are only shot at 20 24p and it will do uh, that at 4k no problem all the lossless audio works I do recommend going in and making some adjustments to its output display and so far as its uh, contrast settings are concerned it was a little washed out for me on my uh, 4k display over there so you may want to adjust some of those settings in the Intel drivers but uh, once you get those things going I think it'll work very well as a home theater device it'll support Netflix 4k uh, but right now it's not so easy to get going you have to go through the edge browser and everything not the best perfect solution here for Netflix, but if you're playing back your own media, especially Blu-ray, MKVs, and other stuff, I think this will do uh, very well. I do wish it had a Thunderbolt port. I think it would make it a real uh, knockout device if it had that, but unfortunately, no, just the USB Type-C. But uh, by and large, this really does perform quite nicely here and uh, fairly reasonably priced, I think. You know, once you get everything configured, you're looking at around $500 or so. And for an Intel KB Lake device, I think it's a pretty good deal. And there's a lot of functionality that this thing can bring, including uh, being able to act as a Plex server, do some casual gaming and all the home theater stuff we talked about as well. And it could probably make for a pretty decent computing device too, just for general computing. So all in a nice little device here from the ECS group. And this is Lon Sivan. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporters Mark Bollinger, Brian Miller, Mr. Morse, and Cody Falk. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.